Everybody, this is Nine with the B-Side. I am your host. I am here with Sate, and we're going to be talking about an album that's going to be released to today, um, the 20th of June, and we're very, very excited to have him on the show because this is a great album. I listened to the whole thing a couple of times last night, and yeah, um, I, I want to know what I'm talking about, man. So um, let's, t- let's talk about, first of all, why you wanted to get this album out now. It's kind of an important time for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, June 20th is actually my birthday. Um, so and right now June 20th, 2019 is going to be my 21st birthday. Kind of like the last big like hoorah birthday. I kind of have been at least told, you know, like I, I get to drink now and stuff like that. So <laughs> I guess we wanted to celebrate. And also um, I've just been wanting to do an album for a while, like a solo album. Um, I've been on some other albums before with like a big group, but mm-hmm. I've really been craving my own sort of craft. And I decided what better time than you know, releasing it on my birthday, especially because I really want the album to reflect who I am as a person. That's what I like, like to do through my music is just reflect who I am. Had you had you ever worked with a deadline before, like no. and, and especially like a self-imposed deadline? No, and that was actually like very interesting. Um, I, it's one of the things I've had big problems with my entire life with in any aspect, any subject, like working on just deadlines especially when it's like self goals like in school when they never they say like oh what's your goal for the year what's your new year's goal um i always had trouble like thinking of something because i i'm just kind of like a free spirit and i'm like well we'll see what happens you know like i'll i'll do what i what i can so tell me what that was like then like in in the studio like i can i only have this much it's different than a budget right it's like yeah. I, I I can go over budget maybe a little bit or something like that but you're imposing that on yourself so yeah and um, honestly it felt really um, there was a lot of pressure on myself um, from myself which I thought was very interesting but like in the when I say interesting I mean it was like it kind of felt a bit foreign to me because I'd never put myself um, like through that type of pressure before and like really stuck to a deadline that I made myself so when I actually was able to you know get the whole album recorded and finish it and all on in time it felt really great as if like you know like I can have dreams and I can achieve them like on my own schedule and I like can rely on myself and I don't have to rely on other people for like whatever I want to do in my life and this was just a small example of it never understand who could ever understand the soul is a surmise a solemn sound love and i hate when they come around just wanna hustle to settle down when i go sweat no one better frown when i go sweat no one better frown Ay. yeah but one of the things that um really made me stick to the schedule was uh i got my wisdom teeth pulled out on the uh, on the 11th, June 11th. So I had to have all of my recordings, all my verses, all my uh, singing choruses, whatever. I had everything recorded and finished by the 10th. Because, you know, I can't really. I mean, I could, but I didn't really want to try and do the album with holes in my mouth. <laughs> the, <laughs> like the gauze and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, not, that's not a good time. Mm-hmm. So I think that that specifically, too, really helped keep me in check with my deadline. Um, just because I was like, well, I have to do it. There's actually no other option. Like, even even if I, at the end, wasn't able to, like, hold m- myself to that pressure, like, you know, and I specifically set the appointment that date because I was like, well, this will keep me in check. How did that, how did that work for you? Um, how did that work for you when you're, when you were writing, right? Like, when, when I'm writing, I, I'm, not, I'm not very often able to, like, pick a theme and, well... 
that's always kind of an angry theme with me, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not very often, often with a song able to just go, this is what I'm going to, exactly what I'm going to write about, and this is what I'm going after right now, right? I'm more of like an antenna, and I kind of catch whatever's going mm-hmm. going through. Um, how did the how did the process work for you then with, as far as like thematically with your album, yeah. was there certain emotions, certain relationships and things that you wanted to pull out and work towards, and how did that pan out with you with the deadline? As far as... Um, Theme wise, I wanted to um, just the whole album. I wanted to kind of have it be. Um, I wanted it to have the theme of duality. So kind of like, because I do really believe that, or and do really feel that there are two sides to my mentality mm-hmm. at all time. Um, very often, I will want two opposing things at the same time. You know, like even though they're like oxymorons or you know cancel each other out. I dug that on your album how you switched it up and how how uh, you brought different elements into it suddenly sometimes too. Mm-hmm. It was sometimes it was kind of shocking. Like whoa, wait, did this? You know, did it skip or did it? No, I'm listening. It, it was great. Yeah, I dug it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about the the engineering aspect of it. How did you? Produce it was it produced in a studio, was it produced at home. What kind of software do you use? That kind of thing. Yeah, so all of the um, everything was produced at home. Um, I uh, I had I have a lot of producer friends or just musically talented friends. Um, so I would you know kind of be like, hey, I'm making an album, and I would really love for you to be on a song with me or to work on a song with me. So like, let's sit down and like let's just make a beat. Like we'll just see what we make. And um, sometimes I would have just a song title in mind. Um, like when, uh, my friend Chris Sobald came um, came over one day, and we worked on the Doty Flame beat. Uh huh. Um, and I was just like, yeah, the song's gonna be called Doty Flame. Um, I don't know, whatever you you, know, you take that what you want, and we just worked on it from there, and that was really cool. Doty, Doty, Flame, hey, Doty, yeah, hey, Doty, Doty, Flame. Bitch, I got this Doty Flame in here right now. You let it seep in, make you sleep in, and I'm trying to roll this rap. So while you down, you better chip in. If you chief in, I'm the chief in. Better check in. Do you do that a lot, titling songs before you? Do yeah, them? that's I did. Um, well, it would de- it would depend. Most of them I would I did title beforehand, but there were a couple such as um, like IDK. That one is actually one that I've uh, written a while ago, but I didn't have any sort of you know, music background, but uh, music for it or a beat. But I really wanted it to be more of like an electronic song, and I do have some uh, electronic uh, producers as friends, so I definitely went to um, my friend uh, Azure Sounds and he definitely did well more than I asked of him and did a great, great music for that. Um, but so that one, I don't know, or IDK, that one was named after the lyrics as well as a full service. I just one day was in the shower. A lot of the stuff I write is either when I'm in the shower or like when I'm driving by myself. I just, especially like when I'm driving and I'm really tired of just listening to the radio or music, I'll just turn everything off. But I, I always need music like in my head. Mm-hmm. There's like, there's always a song playing in my head. It's, I'm kind of feel like Bumblebee sometimes. Like you know how he's like switching through radio stations. So that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. people will say something that triggers a new song or like depending on my mood, and there's a song playing in my head. It's like always in the background. So um, definitely just would create new stuff like in the car. But that's where full service came from. I just wrote it and I was like, oh, that's, that's really cool. I guess I'll just call this one full service. And then I went over to my friend Theorem's house and we worked on the beat together. Uh, nice. yeah. Most of the stuff we, um, I know you asked about like, how we were produced a lot of it. Um, a lot of the music was made in Fruity Loops. Um, okay. That was an image line Fruity Loops. Basically, it's a it's a DAW digital audio workshop, and uh, it's mainly a lot of uh, new like hip hop producers and stuff will use it because it's really easy to um, make like drum loops in it. You know, you just load samples in, and they have a little drum rack. I think it's like 16th notes or something like that, and you just put the drums in and you can copy and paste them out and you know tweak them a little bit sure so we, um i just have a lot of experience with that i've been using it since about 2014 like when i was in high school me and uh, me and my friend james would just uh, just like make music out just for fun while we were bored so speaking of seamus let's talk about the 
the track. It's I guess it's kind of a for me it's kind of a bonus track. But um, oh no, it's 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 the tenth track. I put it at the end for a very specific reason. <laughs> Tell us what it is. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the last song, um, "Blast Season." It's. Uh, a lot of people won't get it unless I tell you, but it's actually about a soda, Baja Blast, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Um, I'm definitely infatuated with the soda. I think it was started in 20, 2015. Um, this this is back when I was in high school. This kid came and was like, yo, have you ever had Baja Blast from Taco Bell? He's like, because I used to play games all the time, and there was this whole MLG phase, and like Mountain Dew was just like the joke, you know, right. you're like, oh, we gotta drink Mountain Dew because we're gamers. Right. So he was like, oh, you like Mountain Dew? You gotta try Baja Blast. And we went to Taco Bell, and I was like, oh, snaps, this is like the best soda I've ever had in my <laughs> life. So I like, I just definitely felt like if I was gonna make an album to really reflect who I am, because like, I can take myself very seriously, but I also like to be a big goofball, like, to be a big joke all the time. So I had to have one entire track that was more or less a joke, yeah. even though there are some like, serious aspects of it. So then we made Blast Season. I was just like, let's just make a really hard hitting, like trap sounding song. No, and just... it's it's the bass on it is so <laughs> ridiculously nasty and dirty. You you love. I mean, I right Shout as soon as it hit, I was like, oh my god, that bass is kicking my ass. It was so good. Shouts out to Young Manny for the bass. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was badass mm -hmm. and. Um, and then the lyrics kick in and I'm like, I wasn't like pay paying that close of attention because one of my kids was running around at the same time. And then I'm like, wait, what's this? I'm hearing like gun blasts and <laughs> I'm going to blast the kids. And, you're, and, and then I went back and I listened to it and I was like on the floor. It was, it was so good. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I yeah, appreciate yeah, yeah. that. But yeah, I definitely had to put that song um, at the end of the album. It is honestly a lot to kind of take in at once yeah it's a huge song it's yeah it's, it's like it's, it's epic. like a five minute song <laughs> yeah. I think it's like five minutes there's yeah. uh there's me uh young manny and then your boy yeah on it um we're all just aficionados that uh, are uh, we're all just well acquainted with the Baja blast yeah and so um but yeah the i had to put it at the end because i like after i because after we made it i listened to the song and i was just it ended and i was sitting there i was like i I can't work on any music right now. Like I was supposed to work on the rest of the album. I was like, I can't. So I was like, I can't. I have to put this at the end of the song or at the end of the album because if anybody, the overload. Yeah, exactly. It's no, like I, drinking too many Baja Blasts. Yeah, you'll, you'll get overly you caffeinated. Get overly all right. Caffeinated. <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely. All right. So tell us, you're gonna drop this tomorrow. You're throwing mm. a big or today. Today. Yeah. Sorry, today. Yeah. And um, because tomorrow is today and today is still today. Mm -hmm. um, and where's it dropping? Uh, we're dropping it on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Google Play, uh, iHeartRadio. Um, there's a chance it might be on Pandora. I'm not really sure about that one. Deezer, uh, Shazam. Um, God, there's a bunch more that I've never even, I've never even heard of. Um, I went through CD Baby Publishing, and they just like kind of throw it out to a bunch of. Uh, services and definitely also on cdbaby.com um, i'm pretty sure you'll be able to get digital downloads on cd baby and also physical um cds i still have to figure out about the cds um those are kind of like up in the air right now but there's definitely a plan to get nice full colored like cds and everything like that nice yeah definitely and then like soundcloud and bandcamp i'll upload that personally um, and you'll find it on this tape. Cool. And we'll be sure to put the links on on uh, this interview on our website as well. And um, anything else you want to tell us? What? I, I I almost hesitate to say what other plans you have coming up because it's like you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I this is definitely just a start for me because um, I mean that was also the point of like just making the debut album because like once I got the ball rolling, then I wanted to keep my momentum going. So definitely, um, we have plans to work on some more singles coming out in most likely the next couple of weeks. Um, and then uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to my group here in Tucson, Gold Plated Vision. Uh, we've been doing stuff for about two years now. We have two albums out. They're both on Spotify and Apple Music and everything. 
All right, everybody, that's it for the B-side tonight. Sate was great enough to uh, sit with us tonight. Be sure to look for the album dropping today, and we will have some of the links on, on our uh, page here and also on our own homepage. Uh, thanks, man, for coming in. Dude, thank you. I glad, really appreciate glad to it. Have you yeah, here. Yeah, of course. Hey, everyone, don't forget, we're going to be in the UK later on this month uh, at the Rebellion Festival. Be sure to go to our GoFundMe page and, and do your contribution because... Uh, we only get there through through our membership and the people who donate to our GoFundMe. Uh, thanks very much. Peace out. We'll see you later.